And now we'll go over several examples of Newton's third law and you'll see how the action and reaction show up in various everyday situations. First we'll talk about a tennis racket hitting a tennis ball or you could think of the tennis ball hitting the tennis racket either way. So if here's your your tennis racket and the tennis ball comes flying in here. It hits the racket the racket hits the tennis ball, the tennis ball goes flying in the other direction. Well it's equally correct to say the tennis ball hits the racket or the tennis racket hits the ball. Both are true. If one thing hits thing two, then thing two hits thing one. Or another way to say it, it's sometimes said that you can't touch something without being touched. If you touch the refrigerator, then the refrigerator is touching you. Anytime there's a contact, object A is hitting object B, and object B is also hitting object A. And Newton's third law says that there's forces involved there, and those forces are always equal and opposite. Now it's easy to see that there's a force on the tennis ball, because the tennis ball goes flying. And you might say, well, why doesn't the tennis racket also go flying? If the, the racket hits the ball that way, and so the ball goes flying that way, there should be an equal and opposite force on the racket. And there is. When the tennis ball hits the racket, it hits, hits it in that direction. And you might ask, why doesn't the racket go flying in that direction? Well, that's because there are other forces on the racket, too. Your hands, in particular, are grabbing the racket down here and forcing it forward. And that force is much greater than the force of the ball. So the racket continues to move forward. This ball hitting it, though, causes it to move forward not quite as fast as it otherwise would. So what I'm saying is that there are two forces here in this case, equal and opposite forces. When the racket and the ball come in contact, there's a force on the ball and a force on the racket. And those forces are equal and opposite. And you could call one of these an action and one of them a reaction. And it wouldn't really matter which one you call which. They're both the, the two equal and opposite forces that are always present in any example of Newton's third law. One object, hits, one object exerts a force on a second. That's the tennis ball hitting the tennis racket. Then the second object exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. That's the, the racket hitting the ball. Now here's another example. Imagine an ice skater pushing against a railing. So let's draw the ice here and here's the railing over the edge of the ice rink and here's an ice skater on skates and put the hands on the railing there and here she is if she pushes the railing what happens well you might have done this before or seen this done if you push on if the ice skater pushes on the railing she ends up flying backwards in this direction or not flying but sliding backward in that direction now clearly there is a force on the railing this way. We know that because she pushes the railing, in this case in our diagram, to the right. She pushes the railing to the right. So by definition, or basically by the way we've set up this situation right here, we know there's a force to the right because she's exerting it. We also know that there's a force to the left because she goes sliding in that direction. And that force is on her because she goes sliding. So if she exerts a force on the railing, the railing exerts the force on her. And you might have done that on ice skates or on roller skates or something like that, or even just standing against a wall. If you push the wall, you go moving back in the opposite direction. You exert a force on the wall, the wall exerts a force on you. Now, again, the question comes up. If the skater moves this way as a result of the force on her, why doesn't the railing move that way as a result of the force on it? And the reason is, that's not the only thing acting on the railing. The railing is fastened into the floor down here. It's built in structurally as part of the building or part of the ice skating ring. It's not just sitting there floating on top of the ice. It's, um, it's mounted you know, into the floor. There's bolts and supports, maybe concrete and steel. It's fastened in place so it won't move. And when a force is exerted on it, other forces appear down here holding it in place. But we're not really concerned about those right now in this context. We're concerned about these two forces right here drawn in red, the forces that are, that are a result of the interaction between the skater and the railing. She exerts a force on the railing. 
the railing exerts an equal and opposite force on her. So again, if object A exerts a force on object B, object B exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. Another good example of Newton's third law is with an airplane. Let's imagine an airplane here flying in this case to the right, although it could be in any direction. So this, this is the front of the airplane up here. The propeller is spinning and here's the cockpit where the pilot sits and then some wings here and then the tail section. So we're looking down on the top of the airplane. Well the propeller basically, the propeller of an airplane is basically a large fan, a very powerful fan. And as it spins, it blows the air toward the rear so that the propeller is pushing, pushing the air back. Well, it's pushing the air back because the, the curvature of the blades as it slices through the air, just like the propeller of a boat or the blades of a fan, as they slice through the air, they exert a force on the air pushing it back. So here's Newton's third law. If the, if the propeller exerts a force on the air toward the back, then the air exerts a force on the propeller toward the front. So that ends up pulling the propeller forward. And, and all of the force pulling the plane forward is transmitted through the propeller attachment right, right there. So that has to be really strong structurally. But the idea is the air is pushed back, the plane is pushed forward. The plane pushes the air to the left, so the air pushes the plane to the right. That's Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. A helicopter works on the same principle, except it's pushing the air down. The helicopter uh, blades are horizontal, and they spin in such a way, and they're, they're arched or curved or angled in such a way that as they spin, they force the air down. And if the, if the helicopter pushes the air down, then the air pushes the helicopter up.